For more than two years after the beginning of the pandemic, we still have no idea when China's borders will open up and how much longer China will remain isolated for. And on the one hand, some people believe that this is the right way forward. But there are others who are enormously frustrated about the lack of freedom. Since she has come into power, I feel that China has increasingly been moving to the beat of its own drum. I'm Katrina Yu, the China correspondent for Al Jazeera based in Beijing. And between us, China is increasingly turning inward and the pandemic has only accelerated that. When I first came to China in 2013, it was really exciting. There was a burgeoning sense of new confidence and more willingness to challenge the authorities, to challenge the official line. Today, China is more powerful, more prosperous. There's also this increasing sense of control and order. When Beijing held the 2008 Summer Games, it felt like China's coming out party. Even media censorship was relaxed during that time. In 2022, it's different. The sense is that China has arrived and it doesn't have much to prove, except that it can hold a successful Winter Olympics despite the enormous challenge of the coronavirus. The reward of zero COVID is that life in unaffected cities goes on pretty much as normal, but there are very high costs associated with this. There is a constant risk of being put under lockdown if you are in an area where there is a coronavirus infection. There have been some unbelievable stories that have resulted from this. There was a woman who was eight months pregnant begging to be seen at a hospital waiting outside the entrance, but they didn't allow her to enter because her COVID-19 test had expired. And in the end, because of that, she lost her unborn child. During the early days of the outbreak in Wuhan, we were in contact with some residents. After the lockdown ended, we returned to Wuhan a number of times to see how things have changed. The city is keen to shake off this reputation of being the origin of the pandemic the virus originated in Wuhan, but Wuhan people didn't create it. I hope they don't keep a bias against us. People didn't like this idea that they were being blamed for an outbreak that eventually spread to millions of people outside of China. It's difficult to gauge the sense of anger or frustration that might remain. There simply is no room for people to express that side of things. Xi Jinping has made it very clear that the media in China exist to serve the Communist Party. People are afraid of speaking out. They're afraid of being labeled as a traitor or suffering even more serious consequences. A growing list of Western countries increasingly associate China with human rights abuses. particularly against the Uyghur people in the Xinjiang region. Treatment, which many rights groups and states say amounts to genocide, something which Beijing has denied time and time again. Now more than ever, there is an increasing sense that in China, the buck stops with the Communist Party. This year is an extremely important political year for the Chinese Communist Party and for President Xi Jinping. He will enter his unprecedented third term in power, which will enable him essentially to rule for the rest of his life. And the Communist Party rewrote the rules to enable him to do this. Yes, many of those people are hugely supportive and appreciative of the government, of the Communist Party, but there are also very many people who want nothing to do with it, who do not want to be associated with it. China is not one big thing. I've been here eight years and I do have the feeling that no matter how long I could be here, I may only just begin to scratch the surface in learning about what China is really about.